Hey everyone, I'm back with our next prompt optimization technique video. And today we're gonna to be focusing on React prompting, which is broken into two components here, reasoning and acting. We'll also test this out in a notebook using a customer service chatbot. But first, let's talk about what React prompting is. So this first step, reasoning, is really similar to chain of thought prompting, if you're familiar with that. But if not, essentially what we're doing is telling our model to really focus on step-by-step -step thinking. And this is really imperative for those multi-step logic problems where you don't want your model to just directly give you an answer. You want that thinking component to be there. And then after you've kind of thought and broken down a more complex problem into digestible steps, we're worried about how we actually solve it now. And that's where this action aspect comes in. Usually you're gonna have some external tools that you're gonna wanna interact with. And this is the part where we decide what tools and in what order are we gonna use to actually solve this issue. And the outcome that we really want here is that we specify this reasoning and acting portion within the prompt itself. So we're gonna get better accuracy first because we're breaking down the problem better. But second, we also have more transparency into how our model is choosing certain tools. If we're you know, getting outputs that we aren't too happy with, we can actually see the step-by-step -step action that was taken and maybe you know, refine our tool descriptions or put more specifications into our prompt. So this is a really powerful prompting technique and let's just see how it works now. Stepping into our notebook, I've done some setup for us. So I've installed Arise Phoenix version eight or greater, which has our prompts hub. And I've also brought in data sets and OpenAI instrumentation. We'll be using OpenAI models today to actually run this chatbot. And I've also went ahead and connected to a Phoenix cloud instance. And with that, I've entered my Phoenix API key and my OpenAI API keys. You can also choose to connect to a self-hosted Phoenix instance. Um, it's just based on what you prefer. And as my final setup step or second to last setup step, I've imported some libraries here. Some ones to call out are, you know, bringing in OpenAI, our Phoenix client. This is the Python version, but we also have TypeScript versions, of course. And from phoenix.evals, I've also brought in LLM classify, which is going to allow us to do LLM as a judge evaluations, which I'll talk about more later, as well as this tool calling prompt rails map, which is going to help our LLM as a judge evaluations by kind of snapping our results into correct and in incorrect. And my last setup step here was actually instrumenting our application so we can collect traces. And by doing that with our act step of React, we can actually go in and see why our model chose certain tools. Now we're ready to actually start jumping into our use case here. The first thing to do is load in our data set to Phoenix. So this has customer service questions that are decently complex in that it's gonna require multi-step tools to actually address them. So I've ran that and now let's go to Phoenix reload this. There we go. And we can see we have 20 examples here. And under experiments is where our experiments are going to populate when we get to that. So let's start doing that. But first, we need to define our tools. So I've defined five tools here that are at our model's disposal to use. I'm going to call out a few of them. So the first one is product comparison. And what that's going to do is compare the features of two products and it takes in product AID and product BID. Another one is product details. That's pretty straightforward. We're gonna also have one where we can ask to apply a discount code or see if a discount code is available. We have customer support. This is kind of when a chatbot tells you, hey, this is not the right department. You need to contact billing, technical support, et cetera. And then finally is track a package. So you know, you're asking where your package is. You can send in a tracking number to this function. We're gonna start with the baseline prompt that's not using React prompting so that we have something to compare it against. But essentially what this is doing first is from the OpenAI library, we're pulling in this completion create params space function, and this is gonna format the parameters for our prompt properly. We specify a model, GPT-4. I have a temperature set here. It's optional, but you can tweak that to however, whatever you want. I pass in my tools, which are the tools we defined up here, as well as a message. So let's dig deeper into what this message is saying. All it's saying is, you are a helpful customer service agent. Your task is to determine the best tools to use to answer a customer question. I'll put the tools and pick three tools at maximum. I specified the picking three tools, so it just wouldn't you know, output every single one, but you can adjust this prompt as you see fit. But the main call out here is that we're not using React prompting here. All we're saying is pick some tools. This is what's at your disposal. And we'll compare that to when we actually do use React prompting. The next step here is to actually build our prompt and we can see how that's done in code and then I'll also show you in Phoenix, but we use this prompt create function from our Phoenix client that takes in the prompt identifier customer support here, a prompt description, and then from prompt version, we use this from OpenAI function, passing these parameters that we just formatted properly, and we run that. And when we go to Phoenix, we go to our prompts tab. Our prompt is right here. 
so this is our text here, the system prompt, a variable questions that is going to pass in each of those data points that I showed you earlier in the data sets tab. And then we also have model configurations all specified within this prompt. So that's our model that we talked about, temperature, tool choice set to auto right now, and every single tool that we defined. So if we click into it, we can actually see what we had in code right over here. Let's go back and actually start building our evaluator and task. So as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be using LLM as a judge to evaluate the output from this. LLM as a judge is a technique where you use an LLM to judge the output of an LLM. The name pretty much has it all. But in order to do that, we need to pass in a prompt to the second LLM that we're using as a judge. And that's where this tool calling prompt template comes in. So let's break this down. So we're telling our LLM to take each question and the tool calls outputted and determine if these tool calls are actually going to solve the customer question. So we take in our input here, question, tool calls, which is the output that we're going to get. And then we categorize into one of these three categories. Correct means that the tool calls were going to sufficiently answer the question. Mostly correct means it's, it's almost there, but you know, maybe it's missing one tool or it has an extra one that's not really necessary. And then incorrect means that these tool calls are not going to help answer the question. And I've also included the tool definitions here. And I've also said, explain why you made your choice so we can look deeper in our traces. Next, we define our task and then actually put this prompt template into an evaluator. This task is pretty straightforward where we use this function to actually pass in our question and we format it with our prompt and it's gonna output the response, the response being the tool calls that the LLM has determined is gonna help answer this question. And then evaluate response is where we actually use that LLM classify function that I spoke about earlier. And we pass in our data frame, which is the customer question, as well as the tool call output that I just spoke about. We pass in our tool calling prompt template from up here. We specify a model, a different model than we used to actually initially answer the question. We use these rails that I also spoke about before that's going to snap this to correct or incorrect. And we also specify that we want a explanation provided. Finally, I ask this to output a score. So if it's incorrect, we're going to put that to a zero. And, and if it's correct or mostly correct, I'm going to say that's a one. And then finally, a return score. With that, we're ready to use the run experiment function where we pass in our data set, a prompt task, this evaluator that we just defined up here, and then some prompt description and some metadata. I've cut ahead to this finishing its run. Now let's go to Phoenix and actually see what the results were. And we'll also look into some traces here. So we can see that with that initial prompt, we have a success rate of about 85%. This could probably be improved upon because you don't want a chatbot that's only right 85% of the time. But let's see what's actually going on under the hood here. Let's take a look at a correct example first. So if we look at our LM as a judge classifier here, you can see that this is actually our tool calling template. And the question that was passed in was, I'm trying to decide between your budget and premium product lines. Could you compare two models and also let me know if there are any discounts available? So as you can see, there's multiple tool calls that we probably want to be doing here. And let's see what the evaluation output was. It, the tool called can compare two models, which is relevant to that question asked. And it can also check for discounts, which directly addresses the customer's request. And that was classified as correct. And now let's take a look at one that was classified as incorrect. This one here was classified as incorrect. Let's see what's happening. The question was, I believe I have an issue with an order I placed, but also want to check if there are better alternatives available. Could you provide me with tracking details and compare a similar product from a different brand? So there's a lot of different steps here. And let's see what the output was. The tool called can provide tracking details with the functions.track package option, which is that tool over there. But it doesn't directly offer a product comparison feature, which is requested. Therefore, the tool selection is incorrect. And that was classified as incorrect. So by digging into these traces, we can kind of see where this prompt without React prompting is lacking a bit. So let's see how we can iterate on this and actually fix this now. And that's going to be done with our React prompt. So this is the exact same setup as before, but now our message is different. And this first line is the same. You are a helpful customer service agent. Carefully analyze the customer's question to fully understand their request. That begins our reasoning step, but this first one, step one, is actually where reasoning comes in, where we say, think step by step, identify the key piece of information needed to answer the question, and consider any dependencies. That's kind of where breaking this down and thinking about how one step of the question flows into another. This Step two is now where action comes in and we say, decide which tools to use, choose up to three tools that will best retrieve the required information. If multiple tools are needed, determine the correct order to call them. And finally, we say output the chosen tools and any relevant parameters. Let's run this. This is our updated prompt and now it's gonna live in Phoenix. As our second prompt version, 
And as we can see, all of our model configurations are here as well. I redefined the task and evaluator here just so it's easier to see, but this tool calling template is the same from above. And finally, let's do our last step and run our experiment. So again, I've cut ahead to this finishing its run. If we go to Phoenix, we can actually see this is really shocking, but our improved prompt at 100% accuracy, not to say that this prompt is perfect, but um, it's probably because our run count was pretty small. If we ran this on a larger data set, we'll probably would have seen improvements from this initial prompt, but not hitting 100. Now let's click into this and actually see what was going on. Let's check out what a trace can look like now. And if we hit chat completion and actually look at our output message, we can see explanations as to why each of these tools were chosen. And, you know, it'll say at the bottom, these tools are chosen because they directly address the customer's request, comparing two products and checking for available discounts. So we had a reasoning step, which can be encompassed over here, as well as an action step. This can definitely go more in depth by, you know, having a more iterative process where you have reason, action, reason, action that's fed into the LLM. This, this is a really powerful prompting strategy. This is just one take on it, but I hope you enjoy trying this out and hope you took something away from this. This notebook will be linked below as well as a link to our community Slack where you can talk more about this, but until next time.